All right, everyone, here we are back at the School of Light for another Image Breakdown. The Image Breakdown is a series I'm putting together um, where we take a look at an image that I love that I think either tells a great story or is part of a, um, you know, uh, uses methods or whatever that I think that anyone watching this will uh, gain some skills or ideas from. And I have plucked a bunch of people off, off the light painting community that I think will be amazing for you to meet. And this is Dan Roberts. Hi, Dan. Hey, thanks for having me, Dennis. Uh, for people who might know me from before, too, I used to be Dan Chick, got married a year ago, and we changed our last name. So just a little bit of context. There. Yeah, totally, man. And we will. So as we do with all of these, I'm going to introduce Dan. So this first bunch of people I've brought together uh, are people that have been around for a long time, not only, not only a long time, but who I feel over the years have been just amazing contributors to the community. And you certainly have been that, Dan. Um, you, you know, I make notes, I make notes in big, bold words of, of people. And, and for, for you, it was, a, these, these were really, I'm getting goosebumps. I shit you not thinking about this. You're an experimenter. Um, you are, you know, when I think about creative people, like you are a creator and, and through this, uh, through this recording and afterwards, people are going to get to see that we're going to fire you all over the place. But the word I've put down here, which I reckon probably describes <laughs> I describes you and the community, man, is you're a connector. So, and there's a few different ways you've done that. So along with Gunnar, you've uh, created and uh, lightpainters.com, which I'll obviously link to below. And, and people will hear me talking about this a lot. It's, um, it's a place where you, you've created this environment for people to connect. Um, Give me like a 60 second snapshot of lightpainters.com, mate. Sure. We wanted a place where people could uh, find other light painters in the world, also share their work. And I wanted a place where people, you know, on Facebook, there's like a hundred different light painter groups. And I wanted a place where we could have a feed and you could tag pictures too. So you'd post it in one place, but be able to filter it by, you know, show me fiber optic pictures or model pictures or whatever else criteria that you want. Now we've got the website. We also have an app in the Google Play Store and uh, very soon I'm gonna be retooling it for the Apple Store as well. But it's kind of like a Facebook uh, that's centered at Light Painters with a mobile app. Yeah, and probably not the, 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 the horrific, I'm trying not to swear but, so kids can watch this, but the algorithms, right? So we don't want, we don't want none of that rubbish. I think right. um, when I think about lightpainters.com and I forgot to put my T I've got a lightpainters.com t-shirt. I forgot to find it this morning. But the other thing that I love about it is that if I decide to come for a trip to America and hit the West coast on lightpainters.com, you can, you can really quickly find other light painters that live in that area. And that, I think, I think it's genius, mate. Right. Um, we've got a Google app where people can pin themselves and yeah, um, it's kind of neat. We just want to get uh, more people using it and you know, it's going to be a world light painter tracker. That's it. Now, I'm going to link below heavily uh, here and, and in the description to also to, you know, you've organized meetups, the Meteor Jam is an event that you do, we'll link to that. Um, your Mosaic project is amazing, uh, where, uh, you know, Dan has these images that are broken down into little sections and different light painters around the world add to it. And so, you know, everyone will see that on the screen right now and we will, um, I'll link to those as well. So go. No, no, we did one two years ago that uh, was the Van Gogh Starry Night piece. Yeah. But we actually have one that's underway right now that is a COVID-19 quarantine inspired piece. So please you know contribute. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to, uh, we'll pop that information up, up on the screen here right now and we will definitely link to that below. Because the beautiful thing about those mosaics is it's something people can genuinely do at home, right? Totally. Yeah, because... Uh, well, we had 50 different artists from 20 countries contribute to this one piece that was part of International Day of Light. Amazing. Amazing. And so, so while you have to be stuck in quarantine, hey, why not? Let's team up with other light painters. That's it. That's it. So we will push people to that. Now, the image that we're going to take a look at. Now, I was when I was looking through your work, um, it's it's what I want to do with these is it, it would, I, I could show 20 or 30 images of yours that just blow my mind, the portrait work and all that sort of thing. But what I love about this image that we've uh, got up on the screen now is there is a, there, there, there's, it's a technically awesome photograph, right? But there's a neat story. So mate, what we're going to do first is uh, looking at, it's obviously, you know, Berlin 2017. Talk to me a bit about this particular image. Um, 
where you were, why you were there, and a little bit of technical about this, and then, um, yeah, we'll move through to a second image that we have. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so um, prior to this, Reagan and I had gone over to Rome for the LPWA meetup, and then this is maybe a year later, almost a year later, eight months later, it was the Light Painters United Berlin meetup, and this was the first one that they had done, and there was a great video about this, by the way, called The Path of Light. And so if you want to link to that in the bottom, totally mm -hmm. worth watching. Totally. Uh, uh, it was such a great ensemble of people. Uh, we definitely came the farthest. Everybody else was from Europe on that one. And then they did another one later, um, Light Painters United Belgium. So we did that one as well. But this particular group, it was, you know, when we went to Rome, we met people for the first time. And we ended up, you know, we didn't know people. We kind of knew them from online but being able to connect and have drinks with people and create art with people. When you get back together the second time, then you've got a connection already. And so when we showed up in Berlin, it was, you know, it was with established friends, not brand new yeah. friends. Yep. And so we went to uh, Malsfabrik, which was um, an old malt production factory and it had all these great locations. And this is the room that they called fight club and that we called fight club. <laughs> yeah. We called it fight club because there was a picture of myself and Gunnar in, uh, if, you, if you're looking at the picture right here, you've got the words and right below it, there's this little pit. Yeah. And so me wearing like a butcher's apron and Gunnar with a pig's head on and yeah. we were having- <laughs> I remember that <laughs> photograph, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this room is called Fight Club. Awesome. And um, yeah, so that kind of sets this, the stage here. We had um, a lot of people from the UK, from Berlin, from France, uh, from Belgium. And I ended up actually getting several of them to team up with me for this shot, which I, I thought was very special. It was our first time, uh, second time across uh, the Atlantic, but our first time in Germany. And I wanted to make a picture that would be memorable for the ages. Yeah. I'm choosing my words carefully here because uh, yeah. that's, that's all foreshadowing. <laughs> so mate, let's have a chat about, th th there's a, there's a, um, so I, I'm, I, the, the, I've done a few of these now, and and I think through these this image breakdown series, this sentence is going to come out of my mouth a lot. But in this pretty gross age of social media, where where we we tend to look at our phones and we do this, right? Our oh, image, 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 image. I've been looking at this photo for five minutes now, and people should just pause more and look at these photographs because the more I look at it, the more I'm seeing. Right? Have a just talk through each of these elements and what, how you've created the element um, and, and yeah, and, and what we're looking at. Yeah, so I'm gonna start by saying when I conceived of this shot, I had a couple pieces I wanted to do. I wanted to have myself and Reagan in yep. the middle of the shot. Now she was Nancy at the time, but she has also changed her name. So if you see the story of this on Light Painting Blog, because uh, Giannis made this nice write up about this yep. too, uh, it's gonna say Nancy, not Reagan. But I wanted to have up in the middle, and I wanted to have the words in the front, yeah. and then I wanted to involve some of my friends to make the shot awesome. So I didn't have a whole lot of direction going in, other than knowing I wanted the silhouette and the words. Yeah. So when we got there, we surveyed the whole area, and I'm going to start with the backlight. Uh, one of the members of our team was Palateth, oh. and Palateth has that massive uh, lead lenser light. And yeah. he does those massive sweeps with colors. So all of that orange light casting those huge shadows, um, that came from Pala at the back. Now that's a pretty simple, you gotta line it up properly and you stay in one spot and you kind of pivot the light. Yeah. So each of the individual things that I'm gonna describe are relatively simple to put together. Uh, the trick here was more the composition and then the execution. Yep. So, so that was the first piece. Um, the second piece was, uh, myself and Reagan with the blue light that's going around us. Now, in that case, I wanted specifically L-Wire. Yep. And so I had Honest Sid, um, who started lightpaintingblog.com. He did the blue for us. And that, you know, you just kind of stand yeah. in one spot and put it around. It's an awesome tool that I completely undervalued until I actually got my hands on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, little divergent here. The first time I shot with L-Wire, yeah. uh, I was with a friend and I had totally forgot that I'd gotten this new tool, L-Wire, and we did our whole shoot and then I'm like, we're done. 
And she said, well, didn't you want to try the L wire? And <laughs> not really I'm kind of done. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, okay, let's do it. And I throw my first L wire and I get this misty smoky oh, stuff. Yeah, man. Oh, I've got a new, new toy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was the, uh, that was the blue. Um, around the edge, there are some starbursts, yep. um, some starbursts. And that was Gunnar uh, with just a point flashlight pointing at the camera. Yep. And when you directly into the lens, you get those nice starbursts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and they're not, they're, not, they're not super easy to do. I, I, no, you carry on and I've, I'll break it down. No, you, no, it's a conversation, please. Oh, no, Go no, ahead. keep going. I'm keen to see what the stars are, what the, the tinkle, the little tinkly bits are. Well, see, that one is the trickiest bit. So yeah. I think... Once you get a hang, the hang of uh, the starbursts that Gunnar did, you yeah. know, as long as you're pointing pretty much at the camera, yeah. they, they do get a bit easier. Um, yeah. they want, but again, you're going to get the feel for that. If you shoot directly at the camera, you'll get them. If you shoot a bit off the camera, you won't get them. Yep. But once you start getting that in your brain, you do that once or twice. It's just practice. This is yep. the school of light. That's so it. you do it a couple times, you practice, and then, then it works. Mm. All right. So – the next piece of light was the twinkly stars. Yeah. This was a, God, what was it? Maybe a four foot stick that Mafu Fuma had built. And it had all these little point lights that he called it his star tool that wow. blinked on and off. So it was, it's kind of like, yeah. we all know what pixel sticks are, the Magilite. It's not that because it's not, he's not drawing a, a bitmap picture, nah. but it was a big stick with lights on it. And he walked from side to side and maybe waved it a little bit, but mostly these the stars just blinked on and off and made this brilliant star background. And Gorgeous. when I look at this picture, the presence of those stars is what makes it really pop. Yeah. So oh. big props to him for that tool. There's something really, there's something really magical about any light painting that has multiple elements, you know, um, it, especially in this instance, because what it means for me is it means there's, it's a collaboration. There's, there's more multiple people contributing to this, this beautiful image. So my question for you, mate, is how many attempts did you make at this image through the night? Well, I want to give one more shout out to, um, there's one more light source. And then ah, go. One more. So uh, Kim Van Coles, I had her on trigger for me. Yeah. And she was kind of directing the shot and we would do a version and she'd give us some feedback and then we'd make some adjustments. So she was kind of running point on that. Yeah. And the actual words. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Reagan and I are standing at the back of this little rectangular yeah. pit, shall we yeah. say. Um, it's not the Pala pit. That's a story for another time that I wasn't there for originally. But um, this one, um, you know, is maybe three feet deep. And so after Giannis lit me, after Gunnar did his stuff, after Paula did his stuff, after Mafu did his stuff, I jumped down into the pit, went to the front of the pit and took a pen light and Wicked. then wrote 2017. And you have to yep. write it backwards, of course, because you're facing you into do. the Because um, some people would just write it normally and flip the picture, but uh, that's not how we roll. So <laughs> <laughs> that's but another, yeah, writing, we'll, we'll cover that in another video, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, you're writing backwards and... You know, some letters are easy. O's aren't bad, T's and E's, but yeah. when you have to draw number two. Oh know, my God. That, not natural. No, and, and R. Right. So, and, and we'll probably get to that one too. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, the, that's kind of the short of it. Those are all the different light sources. Yeah, so then right. you asked how many takes we took. All right. Yeah. So we did this picture four times. Yep. And what you're seeing right now is the fourth time. So this is after we did one, we looked at it and said, okay, we need a little bit more light here Two, yep. tweaked it a little bit. We did number three, which was a little bit different. And then we did number four, which this is the, the picture you're looking at here. <laughs> Chuckle, because you know what's coming. Hell yeah. <laughs> And each time after you were doing each exposure, would you and um, Reagan come look at the back of the camera? See, this, this is the, the best bit. This is how magic works, is sleight of hand. Um, yes, after <laughs> the first picture, we gathered around the camera, looked at it, discussed what needed to change, made the change, did the next version. So we did that for number one. We did that for number two. After number three, uh, I was like, you know what? We're kind of all in the same spot. Let's just do number four. Yeah. So then we did number four. We gathered around the camera and looked at number four. <laughs> yeah. The sleight of hand there 
is that we didn't look at number three. So ah. uh, when three happened, I walked over to the camera where Kim and Giannis were. And after Giannis did the blue, he went back to the camera too to kind of watch. And I said, um, so I had clued in Mafu yeah. and Gunnar before the shot. Um, right before the shot, I told Kim, Paula did not know what was going to happen for shot number three. No and way. Giannis did not either. So these two were making the shot with us, but they didn't know. And I told Giannis, hey, this next shot is going to be a little bit different. Don't act surprised, okay? Yeah. Uh, be- <laughs> and so we go up, we do all the, the shots. He does his blue, uh, Mafu does his light, Gunnar does yeah. his light, Paula does the sweep. I hop into the pit and change the words. Instead of the souvenir Berlin 2017 picture, <laughs> now I write, will you marry me? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and... Check this out. This is this was actually a bit of a fluke, but this was a happy fluke. Look at the shadows from our legs right now. Yeah. How perfectly they line up with the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the golden gap. That's ridiculous, actually. Right, and that was that was dumb luck. That one we couldn't have planned it better. No way. Was, Will you two legs marry me with the shadows all in the right spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so make ta- yeah. So, oh, go ahead, so go ahead. yeah. How how did how did um, Reagan see it well so the, the first thing that happened was uh Giannis tells me well i didn't know it was coming but you didn't look like you were writing berlin 2017 <laughs> uh, you know I'm, I'm making a lot more uh reagan's a bit off to the side so i'm actually kind of hiding the pen with my hands so she can't yeah, see what yeah. i'm writing not like you can really follow it from the side with word drawing anyway but um after we did shot number four we got together, said, hey, cool, that's a wrap. Thanks for helping me out, guys. They all left. Uh, and after they left, uh, I showed her the picture, and she said yes. Uh, she would have been peaking, mate. Absolutely yep. peaking. Look, I, 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 it's a, you know, it's magical. I mean, that's the only word, really. It's a, what a beautiful, beautiful way to obviously do what you did, but, but to involve so many people to, you know, I, I goosebumps again, but, but, I, I think not only is it a beautiful way to do to propose to someone with a group of people in another city, was she, was she expecting it? Oh, uh, we had talked a little bit about, you know, whether we had some big picture togetherness that way. And yeah, she well. always joked that, you know, it was like 87%. And so when I asked her, I asked her if it was a hundred percent and showed her the picture. Uh, the, I think uh, she was not expecting it, no. And I no, didn't have a ring, which actually I kind of had a ring because earlier that day we'd gone to a piercing shop in Berlin and she got her nose pierced. Yeah. I insisted on paying for it because, you know, at the very least I had this as a ring. Yeah. But she's a designer and I didn't want to pick out a ring that wasn't going to fit no, no, her no, stuff. No, no, no. Design that together afterwards. I think the thing, uh, so when I, when I look at this photograph, what it does is it is is all, all of that gorgeous stuff aside and the fact it's a nice image i think it represents light painting perfectly because things like calligraphy like uh your portraiture um you know the great the great light painters see light in the mind's eye and i think it represents beautifully the idea that we are genuinely light painting you know you you unless you have some technology that exists in some cameras like the Olympus live composite or whatever, when you're writing that, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's in the mind's eye. And I, and that's, that's one of the beauties of light painting as a concept. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to just share a little thing after we finished this picture, we went right. upstairs uh, and told everybody, you know, Paula um, even let Giannis got to see in the moment that we made this shot. Paula yeah. left not knowing, what shot number three was so wow. he didn't even find out that he'd helped out with the proposal shot my yeah. goal you know it's cool to have a picture of ma- magical moments but in this case i figured let's make the magical moment key off of the picture so now we've got this visual memory forever that really captures that moment oh and and look uh, you know I, I i i'm always so envious when i hear of people being of those, you know, people being together like that, like what a group of people, man, <laughs> what a group. All-star team. It was great. Oh my God. Like one of the things that I think about, like, uh, you know, being down here in Adelaide, you know, we are literally, uh, 
three hours flight from Antarctica. We've, we're a long way away from anywhere. And being up in Berlin last year with you guys was just a joy. Um, I often fantasize about living on a continent with more than 20 million people, you know. Just you know, it's be... funny. I actually can relate. The second article I wrote for Light Painting Blog was yeah. uh, trying to start a scene in Denver. Yeah. I actually did a circle of a 700-mile radius. Yep, I've seen it. It's like crazy. Other light painters. So the U.S. has some. Europe is the hot spot. Oh, yeah. But I felt uh, alone for a long time, just like you did. But now we've got a pretty good scene in Colorado. Oh, look. And, and, and you know, we'll wrap up. But the the it's people like you, Dan, uh, who who work so incredibly hard to connect the community, you know, and, and I go back to the word I wrote, you're a connector and, and I, and I don't want to undervalue and I don't want people watching this to undervalue the amount of time and effort and energy that goes into not just starting community, but maintaining it. And um, I was chatting to Trevor Williams yesterday, uh, you know, who, who founded and, and started uh, um, the light junkies group is, all light painting, all light painting, you can draw the DNA tra trail back to those times. You know, obviously before that, uh, you know, I've, I've done a whole episode of the School of Light on the history of light painting, but the contemporary light painting. Modern to, community. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Way before Facebook and YouTube and all that, you know, we, I, I went, I spent two hours on, in the, the 2008, 2009 light junkies pages and it, and it, it was like an explosion of creativity. Yeah. That predates me. I go back about six or seven years, 2013 or so, but that predates me and it's awesome to see what's back there. Oh, it's amazing. Well, 2013, man, like that still, it was still this little nugget of a thing. It was still tiny. And, and we, I think what, what I'm trying to do with the image breakdowns in the school of light is really educate people on, um, you know, it's very easy just to go out and paint, right, and, and stuff. But I truly believe that if you want to connect with light painting as an art form, you need to connect with the people. And so what I'm going to do, mate, is it's a long list, but in the, in the, the, the comment, the, the, the description below, I'm going to put a link through to a whole bunch of the incredible work that you do, that you've done. We'll, we'll, we'll link to light painting blog to lightpainters.com. I mean, the list is ridiculous, but I really encourage anyone watching that if, if you want to go down the Dan Roberts rabbit hole um, and, and Reagan is often in there. Um, it's going to be a huge amount of fun and you will be inspired to, 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 to push through some boundaries. Um, that's what I think about when I think about you, Dan, is, is that you, I don't think you're afraid to, to walk up to the edge and just sort of climb through and, and experiment. And I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you. And I want to just give you a huge thank you for joining us today. And, and this stunning image. You, you're thank you for having me on. I'm just gonna make a quick plug for Light Painting Lab because it's a community exactly in the spirit of the School of Light. Totally. <laughs> um, if you uh, some other time we can talk of a more technical shot and we'll get into some uh, science magic or something. I think so, mate. And I and and that's another thing to touch on is that pe people, you know, I manufacture light painting tools. There's a whole lot of people that make tools, but I think one of the DNA of light painting community is is back when you were always experimenting and making your own tools. And, and I always start my, you know, I've created some videos and I will be that, yes, you can go online and buy and drop money on tools and stuff, but there is nothing more exciting than experimenting and making your own tools. Um, and I'm a huge, huge advocate for that. And, and so, yeah, Light Painting Lab will be, like I say, man, the list is long in the Dan Roberts. <laughs> Hey, it's a team effort and we're all in this together and I appreciate your efforts with this uh, awesome school of light. Ah, thank you, mate. We'll be in touch very soon and give my love to Reagan. I'll pass that on. Beautiful man. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this visit to the school of light. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the light painting tool shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.